Okay, gonna do a study and video like mini study basically on God's covenant with Israel and how God is not done with the nation of Israel. Contrary to what heretics like Stephen Anderson and Tex Mars who is dead and now burning in hell will tell you. So let's go to the scriptures because that's gonna be our obviously our main source because the Bible is our authority for faith and practice, not Catholic tradition, is not you know the mass or not the, the divine traditions and the words of men, the words of God. What does the word of God say about God's covenant with Abraham and has God cast away the, the Jews? Because you have you have one side, you have Bible believing Christians, you have the Apostle Paul and you have Abraham and you have God. Then you have Stephen Anderson on the other side and his go his goons who are saying two different things. And we're gonna see that very clearly. So let's get right into it. Genesis chapter 17 verses 1 to 19. And when Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the mighty God, walk before me and be thou perfect, and I will make my covenant between me and thee, and, sh and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be the father of many nations. Neither shalt thy name any more be called Abram, but thy sh name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations for a temporary covenant. Oh, wait a second, that's what the Stephen Anderson version says. It says, the King James Bible says, an everlasting covenant. To be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee, and to thy seed after thee, the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan, for a temporary possession, and then God you know, replaces them with the Gentiles. Oh, no, that's according to Stephen Anderson. But what is God saying? For an everlasting possession. Hmm. So you have two things here. You have, you have two contradicting things. You have Stephen Anderson saying that God is, given, has, is temporary and God's done with them. But then you have God telling Abraham something very contrary. So who are you going to believe? The Bible or Stephen Anderson? Pick your choice. Or make your choice, whatever you want. Uh, and God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore uh, thy and thus, sorry, thy, thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you, and to thy seed after thee, after thee every man child among you shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man child in your generations. He that is born in the house or brought or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for a temporary uh, possession or a temporary covenant. And God gives it over to Stephen Anderson and the Gentiles. Oh no, it says for an everlasting covenant. It's kind of funny. It seems that the words of Stephen Anderson are contradicting the words of God. Interesting. You know, it's almost like Stephen Anderson's calling God a liar. Interesting. And a circumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. Here's where it gets good. You know, you run into these Anderson guys who say, oh, no, God is done with Israel. Show them what God said, you know. Because again, who are you going to believe? The Bible or Stephen Anderson? Because the Bible overthrows a little cult leader like Stephen Anderson. The Bible overthrows, I like the way Gip put it, the Bible overthrows some cheap dictator. Amen to that. Anderson has this little new IFB cult. It's their words against God. And the words of God overthrow the words of Stephen Anderson. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be, and I will bless her, and give thee a son also of her, yea, I will bless her, and she will be the mother of nations, kings of people, shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face, and laughed, and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And then called, and shall Abraham, um, not the best at reading, uh, shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, O Ishmael, or that, O that Ishmael might live before thee, Here's where it really gets good. Uh, verse 19, And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for a temporary covenant. Oh no, for an everlasting covenant. And with his seed after him. Hmm. So again, it brings back to this thing. You have the words of Stephen Anderson, and you have the words of the Roman Catholic Church, and some of these other heretics out there, and you have the words of God. Stephen Anderson says that it's a temporary covenant, 
and that where he implies it's a temporary covenant and that God is now done with them and he's is now now the Christians are now the chosen people. But you have God who's saying it's an everlasting possession and an everlasting covenant. Again, the the word of God overthrows some cult leader like Stephen Anderson. You know? Uh, Jeremiah chapter thirty two verses thirty six to forty. Here's another good one to throw at these uh Andersonites. Jeremiah, where is Jeremiah? Chapter thirty six. Verses, or no, 32, I went to 36. See, I'm so fallible. You see, unlike, unlike Stephen Anderson, I actually will admit to be wrong. I actually will confess my faults. I've, I've been corrected many times. I've never seen Anderson once be corrected. <laughs> Funny. But, you know, that's how all cult leaders act. They, they will not be corrected. They are, the, they, are the man, they are the man of God, and whatever they say goes, regardless if it contradicts Scripture or not. Jeremiah 32, verse 36 to 40. And thou therefore thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, not the God of the Andersonites and the new IFB, the God of Israel. It's kind of funny because whenever Stephen Anderson prays, he prays to the Holy One of Israel. Hmm, interesting. But, you know, what, what, what do you expect when it comes to Anderson? Because he doesn't, you know, the hypocrisy of evil. He doesn't know his own hypocrisy. So God, God, is, against, God is against Israel. God is done with Israel. But we're praying to the Holy One of Israel. Okay. Weird God you got there, Anderson. Uh, God of Israel concerning this city, wherever you say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Behold, I will get, here's a good prophecy about God bringing back the Jews to their land, contrary to what the Andersonites say and contrary to what the Catholics say. One of the, well, it, it's a little side note, one of the really amazing things is how Anderson will, will attack the Catholic Church and will say, I'm not a Catholic. But what he's saying is exactly what the Catholics believe, that God is done with Israel and all this other stuff. And of course, Roman Catholicism, all it is is just modern day, you know, pagan sun worship, a modern day pagan Babylonian witchcraft uh, under the guise of Christianity. And same thing could be applied for the new IFP and the Andersonites. They are just Roman Catholics. Not, not, I'm not saying they are actual Roman Catholics, but they're teaching Catholic doctrine. Behold, I will gather them out of all countries. Here's a prophecy about Israel that the Andersonites can't handle. Uh, whether I have di or driven them in mine anger and in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause or, and I will cause them to dwell safely, and they shall be my people, and I I, sh I will be their God, and I will give them one heart and one way that they may be with me for a little while, and then God will replace it with the, with uh, Stephen Anderson. And oh no. It doesn't say that. Maybe that's what the Anderson version says, but the Word of God says uh, they will fear me forever. Hmm, interesting. And for the good of them, and for their children, or for and of their children after them, and I will make a temporary covenant. Oh no, it says everlasting covenant with them, and I will not that I will not turn away from them until Stephen Anderson comes along, and then he says he can change what God said. Yeah. To them, that, or to them that, or and to do them good. But I will put my fear in their hearts, and they shall depart from me after they reject Jesus. And oh no, they shall not depart from me. Hmm. It's just funny. It seems that the words of God, the very actually, this is God speaking. The very words of God are seem to contradict the words of Stephen L. Anderson in Tempe, Arizona. Interesting. It's also kind of funny because uh, the book, the Gospel of Matthew, calls Jesus the it calls Jerusalem the city of the great King Jesus Christ. So it basically, it's the it's. The Jerusalem is the city of the great king, not Tempe, Arizona, not Phoenix, Arizona. Interesting. Here's a good one. Uh, really good one to throw at these Andersonites. Here's a, I mean, they just will have to do these mental acrobatics to explain this away. Because they don't they don't believe the word of God. They're just they claim to. But just like a Roman Catholic, they'll just they'll they'll claim to believe the Bible, but when it contradicts their sacred tradition, they'll just they'll disregard it. Romans chapter eleven, verse one to three. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Now, let me pause right there. We have a question being asked. This is the question that Stephen Anderson claims he knows the answer to. Hath God cast away his people? Well, according to Stephen L. Anderson, God has cast away the people. But what does the Apostle Paul say? Hath God cast away his people? God forbid. Hmm. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people. Hmm. Uh, which he foreknew, what you know not, the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed thy prophets, and dig down thine altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. You know, you can go down, it just debunks the whole thing of replacement theology, and it debunks the words of the Andersonites. So, 
here's, it begs the question, who are you going to believe? The Bible or Stephen L. Anderson? Pick your choice. I'm, I'm going to believe the Bible. Because the Bible is clear. I mean, you can go all through the Bible. There are so many prophecies. The Bible is just filled. It's just packed with, with uh, prophecies about God bringing the Jews back to their land and how it's an everlasting possession. It's an everlasting covenant. But you're going to have to get rid of all of that if you want to join Stephen Anderson's cult. Hmm. Interesting. You know, and why I say it's a cult? Because they're, they're basically putting the words of Stephen L. Anderson. Uh, here's the thing. If you're, que if you're afraid to question what your uh, pastor, the man of God, says, you might want to get out of there because it's probably a cult. Because Anderson, he'll get up and say, we've replaced Israel. Actually, let me just go, go to Romans chapter 10. Here's another good one. And this is something you'll never hear out of Stephen Anderson's mouth. Romans chapter 10, verses 1 to 3. This is Paul speaking. And again, I guarantee you, you're never going to hear this from Stephen Anderson. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going to establish or going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law to, for, or for righteousness to everyone that believeth. I guarantee you, I'll... Guarantee you money, I would never hear something. You would never hear something like that come out of Anderson's mouth or any of these other replacement theology people. They'll say, Oh, yeah, we want to convert the Jews. Yeah, they're converting them to this thing of easy believism, no repentance. But you'll never hear Anderson say, My heart's desire and prayer for God for prayer to God for Israel is they might be saved. Because with the Andersonites, the replacement theology Andersonites, and they are a minority, but they are growing very fast. The Stevies, and you know, I, I, I've heard them, you know, I like them, they might call them the Stevies, you know, the Andersonites. The Stevie Andersonites, they're growing very fast. I mean, they're, they're still a minority, but they are growing faster because they're basically sending people into other churches to mess things up and to basically convert people over to their, you know, false cult over there in Tempe, Arizona. And by the way, they'll say, oh, we're not a cult, we're not a cult. Stevie Anderson's not our leader. Yeah, he is, okay? They always have to report back to the master. They always have to just, you know, I mean, when, when Gip came out and did this thing of, of and I'm not saying I agree with what he did, but saying that Jesus was not supposed to be named Jesus, but Anderson said we should call all the churches and demand to cancel Gip. And I guarantee you that the people that were calling the churches were not, they didn't, they didn't watch the clip of Gibb saying that and say, oh no, look at that, I better call the churches. They were told by Anderson to call the churches because Anderson is their leader. So that's the thing, just a kick at Stephen Anderson and just a total annihilation of this whole replacement theology, just anti-Israel garbage that comes from the Anderson camp and from the Roman Catholic Church and from other cults too. So don't be deceived by the whole replacement theology thing. I mean, scripture is clear. God does not cast away his people. You know, it's an everlasting possession. Not according to Anderson, but according to God, it's an everlasting possession. So, don't be deceived. God bless you. Goodbye.